just ignore my handwriting. I used this for scratch paper at some point. I don't remember when. So we've got first two cosine beta plus one times cosine beta minus one. So I have to distribute that. Two cosine beta times cosine beta, that's two cosine squared of beta. Two cosine beta times negative one will be negative two cosine beta. Cosine of beta times one is gonna be positive cosine beta. And then one times negative one gives negative one. Next, we want to combine any like terms that we have. So we've got negative two cosine b and a positive cosine b. So this is gonna be two cosine squared beta minus cosine of beta minus one. And that's it. Okay, so with this, we're not really worried about rewriting it yet. We're just making sure we know how to distribute. Okay, here's the next one. 3 sine of theta plus 2 squared. So that means I have to multiply it by itself. I can't just square the first term and the last term. So now if I distribute that, 3 sine theta times 3 sine theta is 9 sine squared of theta. 3 sine theta times 2 is going to be 6 sine theta. 2 and 3 sine theta, 2 and 3 sine theta is another 6 sine theta, and then 2 and 2 is 4. Combine like terms, 6 sine theta and 6 sine theta gives 12 sine theta. Questions there? And then three, I'm just gonna write it down beneath it because I've ruined all my space. So I've got cosecant of alpha minus one times cosecant of alpha plus one. So this is a difference of squares. So when I multiply the first, I get cosecant squared of theta then I get a positive cosecant and a negative cosecant, so those are going to cancel. And that leaves me with negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Again, we know that those middle two terms cancel because these are what we call conjugates. It's the exact same thing in parentheses. The only thing that's different is the sign in between them. So if you remember from 112, that is called a conjugate little bit of distributing, but now we're going to go the other direction and factor them. So just think about this. Just pretend like this is some variable, like this was 2y squared minus 5y minus 3. So if you had to factor that, this is not one that we can see just super easily, but we could do a times c. So 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, what multiplies to be 6? Added or subtracted is negative 5. So we've got to think about it. We're going to need opposite signs. So both these might work, okay, but it has to be here because we need opposite signs where one's negative and one's positive. So we're going to rewrite this as 2y squared minus 6y plus y minus 3. And then we GCF 2y. So that's going to be y minus 3. This is GCF of 1, y minus 3. And so remember, my y was just sine of theta, or sine of x. So this is 2 times sine of x plus 1. That's what was in front of the parentheses. And then what's inside the parentheses is sine of x minus 3. So we just treat that big trig function just like it was a variable. Okay, so if I look at number two, again, we're just told to factor. So we don't have to go through all the steps of, you're good, I hadn't done wrong. We, have, have, we don't have to do all the steps of trying to get it even farther down and farther down. All, we, all we're focusing on is factoring. If it tells me to factor, that's all I'm doing is factoring. So on number two, if I'm factoring this, 
I've got two fourth degree terms, and there's subtraction between them. So they are a difference of perfect squares. So I can factor that to be sine squared of y plus cosine squared of y, of x, sorry, times sine squared of y minus cosine squared of x. Now, I've got to see, will it factor again? So right here, these two terms are both squared, but there's addition between them. We do not have a sum of squares to factor it down by, so this one is stuck. However, this set of parentheses is a difference of squares again, so I have to factor this part as a difference of squares. So that becomes sine of y plus cosine of x times sine of y minus cosine of x. And so my final answer is going to be sine squared of y plus cosine squared of x times sine y plus cosine x times sine y minus cosine x. Any questions on two? Factoring that as a difference of squares. Another reason that you can't write that using the Pythagorean identity is because they have different arguments. There's a y and an x. But even beyond that, if I'm told to factor and only factor, I'm not thinking Pythagorean identities at all. I'm just factoring like we used to do in Algebra 2 and what we did in 112 earlier. So these, you're going to have some questions if you'll look at your homeworks. Some of them just say factor. That means we just want to factor, don't think about any identities. Okay, so right here I'm looking at three. It's a trinomial, three terms, sine squared beta, cosine beta, plus sine beta, cosine beta, minus two, cosine beta. First thing I notice, all three terms have a cosine beta in them. Therefore, there's a GCF of cosine beta. So I'm going to factor the cosine beta out. So that's going to give me cosine beta times sine squared beta plus sine beta minus 2. So now what is in parentheses is now a trinomial. It is three terms. You can think about this as being like x squared plus x minus 2. So can I factor x squared plus 2x minus 2? I can. So again, what I'm thinking about, x squared plus x minus 2. So what multiplies to be negative 2, added or subtracted, is a 1. Well, that's going to be a 1, I'm sorry, a positive 2 and a negative 1. So if I do the a times c method and then rewrite that b term, this is going to be sine squared of beta plus 2 sine of beta minus sine of beta minus 2. And let me redraw those arrows because I didn't end up writing them where they were at. So right there, the sine beta can be rewritten as 2 sine beta minus sine beta. Again, just like the A times C method. Now if I factor that set of parentheses, I'm going to factor that by grouping. So if I group the first two together, they have a GCF of sine beta, which leaves me with a sine beta plus 2. GCF of the second two is a negative one. That leaves me with a sine beta plus two. And remember, when we factor by grouping, the parentheses must match. So this factors to be the stuff in front of the parentheses times what's inside the parentheses. And then do not forget our GCF of cosine of beta at the very beginning. So my final answer there is cosine of beta times sine of beta minus one times sine of beta plus two. Okay, so we're told to simplify this fraction. So when I see these problems, I'm going to first think, can I factor? And then if I factor, can I reduce by anything? Right, is there a like term that I can cancel out? If I can't factor and I can't cancel, then I'm going to have to multiply by conjugates probably to fix the denominator. But I think all of them we're going to have in the homework are going to factor in some way. Okay, so I look at the numerator. That's the difference of perfect squares. One is a perfect square. Cosine squared is a perfect square. 
So I can factor that as 1 plus cosine x times 1 minus cosine x. And then this is going to be over 1 plus cosine of x. Now I have a like factor of 1 plus cosine x that I can cancel by, and that leaves me with 1 minus cosine x. Final answer.